A scientific analysis of Mo Norman's mechanics. Four views with a wedge. Mo had the least moving parts of any tour type mechanics. His backstroke was very short. He had the least hip and shoulder turn. His feet stayed flat on the ground until well after impact. He faced the ball at impact. His follow-through was limited and unique. Moe's single-axis right-hand grip is what allowed him to become a great ball striker. All the hand photos were taken from an actual stroke or just before a stroke. The back of his left hand and the club face pointed in the same direction. There were no left hand knuckles on top of the grip. In his right hand, the butt of the grip was in line with the bottom of his right forearm and pushed into his thumb pad. The shaft, right palm, and right forearm formed a single axis. Mo's foot action with a seven iron. Mo sat into his knees and his feet were flat on the ground at impact. Optimum balance. Most foot action from the back. His feet were flat on the ground and he faced the ball at impact. Most foot action from behind. Feet flat on the ground, face the ball at impact. Mo's foot action from the target. Feet flat on the ground, faced the ball at impact. Mo's hip action. Next club. Hips faced the ball at impact. Hips faced the ball at impact. A large part of Moe's clubhead speed came from the stretch reflex of his right wrist releasing at 66 milliseconds before impact. This is a front view of Moe hitting a four iron. Shows the full stroke, feet, hips, and the head and shoulders. This is the same four iron sequence from the back. Center of the body. Feet. Feet again. Okay. Head and stuff doesn't have to be in. And now the shoulder. A full stroke and impact from behind with a four iron. This sequence of videos shows Moe's backstroke length with a wedge, a four ironed, and a driver. There were six TV frames from the time Moe's hands started down in the downstroke to impact with every club, wedged to driver. While performing a clinic in Chicago in 1993, Moe demonstrated what he called his master move. His first motion in the downstroke was to sit into his knees. His left knee moved over his left big toe. 
This took three TV frames. On the third TV frame, Mo's right hand moved backward and downward. He felt he could hold a plate in the palm of his right hand through impact. Mo's head and shoulders from behind show the TV frames and his master move. The right elbow straight back starts the backstroke. The master move starts the downstroke. The master move in the downstroke. The master move and forearm rotation through impact. Mo had very limited shoulder turn. At address, each shoulder was forward of his hips by around 45 degrees. At the end of his backstroke, his right shoulder aligned with his right hip and his left shoulder rotated an additional 45 degrees to a position under his chin. This is a photo of Mo at address and impact that I had a professional photographer take in 1993. Golf Digest dedicated 35 pages on Mo in their December 1995 issue. Jack Kirkendall supervised all of these shots and selected each photo for the articles. Jack's article explained Mo's mechanics. Mo's shoulders appear to be closed at address. They were not. With a driver, he was already 18 inches into his backstroke. With a driver, there was a 10 inch difference between the height of his right and left shoulder. With a driver, there was 22 inches between his heels. Mo used a very wide stance. This limited body swaying in the backstroke and optimum body balance at impact. At the top of his backstroke, Mo braced into his right leg and his hands were around shoulder high. The start of the downstroke shows Mo's master move. He sat into his knees while his hands moved backward and downward. The setting into his knees squared his hips and legs and ensured the backward and downward motion of his hands. Mo's impact position was extraordinarily superior. It is still awe-inspiring. This is an optimum impact position. His feet are flat on the ground, optimum body balance. His knees are still bent, optimum body balance. His head is over his right knee, optimum head position. The back of his left hand and the club face point at the target, optimum hand and club face alignment. The shaft, right palm, and right forearm form a straight line, optimum mechanical advantage. Video of Mo during a clinic at Pine Needles Resort in April of 1995. Coin 41 inches back. Trained myself as a kid for hours. Like I said back when I was a kid, I used to put this 41 inches back. This is where I used to train myself. Gets out of my back swing. That's where I used to train myself. That's where I trained my muscles when I was a kid. Doing, a lot of, doing this for hours. 
That's what I used to practice for. When there was snow outside. My mother gave me hell because I, I, I was wearing a hole in the... She gave me hell. <laughs> we can't afford that. more than that. Because I used to bring E3. That's getting a lot out of Also, the first time I was with you, when I went through the science and stuff, uh, you pulled uh, some photographs out of your pocket that you'd, that you'd been keeping in your pocket since when? 1960 what? 1964. 1964. Pictures that were taken in 1964. And you made the statement to me that uh, uh, all my life I've wondered why I can hit golf balls as good as I can. And you're the first person who's ever able to explain it to me. And that's yes, when you, you gave were, me those yes, pictures. You were. You were huh? the first one to really tell me what, why I, I am the best striker that's ever lived and you were the first man that, that could explain to me why. Yeah. When, when you very first started playing, what did you do to your club so that you could swing with your method? First thing was real heavy clubs and big oversized grips. Mm -hmm. I went to a carpenter one time and said, I was only about 18. And I said to him, don't worry, sir, I'm not trying to get your job. But is your hammer heavy or light? And he said, it's heavy. I said, why? So it doesn't waver as much, so it won't bend as many nails. Mm -hmm. A light one, you'll waver more. But gee, as I said to myself, holy jeez. If he's only going back that far with a hammer, or this far, and we're going way back to here, why not have a heavy club? So right away, I went and made my club E3 when I was 19 years old, and that's I've been swinging ever since, and uh, I still do to this day. Not the, the grip. Very, 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 all oversized. My, I got no variation in my grip in the hand. Both sides, mm -hmm. size of the grip is the same in both hands. Mm -hmm. There's no variation. Mm -hmm. And I've got it in the palm of my hands, never in the fingers. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm in the palms. Uh, when did you know that you were going to be able to hit a golf ball the way you can hit a golf ball? When I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. I was in the very pure even then, and uh, every day was feeling more rhythmic. Every day I went out, I knew I was on the right track. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys tried to change me. I, I just wouldn't listen, and I'm glad I didn't today. When did you have, you made a statement to me the first time I met you, that you had this a feeling of greatness that you knew your swing would never let you down and that was when you was 19? No, a little later on, but maybe when I was 24, but 24? that's what I felt from that day to this day now. Huh? I'm the only person with a feeling of greatness in this game. I'm the only guy that can hit the ball the same every day I go out. Mm In the 50s, you used to play uh, a lot of holes at one time. In one particular day, you had some hole-in-ones. Can you uh, tell me about the, how many you had in that day? Well, the one day back in, I think it was 58. 
1958. Okay. And, uh, we used to play a lot of times, play 36, 54, 72 holes in one day. Uh huh. And uh, in one day, I had three holes in one, and uh, but but in one day, not in one round. In one, one day. One in each round. One in each round. Yes. What was the longest one? Four wood. A four wood. Mm -hmm. What was the shortest one? Uh, eight iron. An eight iron. That, that's that's amazing. Most people don't have a hole in one during their whole life, much less three in one day, even if it was uh, 54 holes. One of the stories uh, you had talked to me about was uh, how you and Knutson, when you used to practice what you did. Uh, well, what, uh, tell us something about that, your, your, your money part. The way we used to play with $20 if you miss, if you miss a fairway for a good tee shot, $20 if you miss a green, and $100 if you miss a hole. How many, I, how many, how many hundred dollars did you win? One round, I, my best was hitting the pin six times in one round. Six in one round. His best was four. Four. Okay. Cost me four hundred that day. Cost you four hundred, <laughs> but you won more six hundred than he won four hundred. No, just one. Just one. That's tough. What was the average number of fairways and greens that you guys would hit? Seventeen. Yeah, you'd average seventeen. Oh, yeah. We'd hardly ever change the dollar, twenty dollar bill because we're always always down right. in the middle, and we we hit seventeen greens around. We didn't we didn't believe the old things like. Two, three, four, five in a hole. Yeah. We didn't pay off for the guy that could putt. Yeah. We paid off for the guy that could hit the ball good. That's what we both believed in. That's why we, we both became the two best strikers of the ball that the world's ever known. And because uh, that's the way we bet, and that's what we put more value on was who could hit the ball the fewest. Ball strike. Yes. Uh, there's a story uh, with Sam Sneed on on uh, that you were playing with him one time. And there was a, a creek running across and a bridge there. Uh, tell us about that story. Well, he got up first and hit an iron, laid it up. He says, and then I got up. He says, you got too much club. Well, I said, no, I haven't. He says, well, you're going to go in the creek. I said, no, I'm going to roll across the bridge. And I did. And then, did it say anything after that? Did you hit another one across for him, no, too? Just, just, just this one. one just the one. Then he, then he laughed. He said, <laughs> I'll, I'll never club you again. <laughs> okay.